Let's make LAB. Just takes three ingredients, rice, water, and milk. It's a lengthy process, but it's very simple. First, you just need to make a rice washed water. I'm using sushi rice. It's nice with sushi rice because you have to rinse so much already that it's not really a waste of the water. So we take our, our rice. Just gonna so now we're just gonna stir up as much of that starch as possible. The water's really cloudy, so that's pretty good. We're just gonna strain all that water into a clean jar. Doesn't need a lid. Wider mouth would be easier to pour all this, but. So what we're left with is this milky rice starchy water. And that's it for this step. Now I just grab paper towel, rubber band, and we need a label. So this jar goes to sit in a dark place for a few days or overnight, depending on conditions. If it's warmer, it's going to go way faster. This is basically going to ferment a little bit and you'll notice it's ready when you smell it. Right now it just smells like starchy water. If it's ready to move on to the next step, it's gonna smell kind of sweet, not sour, not rotten. It will just be kind of fermenty, kind of sweet, and it'll look pretty cloudy still. So dark spot, don't disturb it. Just check it every day. Or if it's really, really hot where you are, check it every half day. So off with this one. Oh wow, here it is, it's, it's later, and it does smell, it's a little tart. It's not sour, but there is definitely a little bit of a edge to it. So now that this has fermented, we're ready to move on to the next step. So we'll take another jar, bigger if you want to make a large batch. I've done bigger batches before. You just wanna make a ratio one to 10 of the rice wash water to milk. And I'm kind of out of milk, so this is gonna be a tiny batch. So first I'll start with the, the 10 milk. All right. And so for the one ratio, since I was doing two, I just fill this halfway. And the rest of this you can just dump. If you're gonna make a bigger batch, you still probably won't need all of it. We've got our ricey milk now. So now, needs to wait, put it in that same spot. This time it's gonna be sitting a little longer, but you do wanna monitor it frequently to make sure, because if it spoils, you have to start from scratch. Like if you go too far at any point in this process, just start again. Don't, don't try using it. Definitely don't try eating it. I don't really eat it to begin with, I don't know. You can, I haven't yet, I might eventually. So this guy, back in its dark corner, for a few days, you're gonna notice a visual change rapidly. Once it starts warming up and gets a roll going, you will absolutely see the difference. So I'll demonstrate. It's done. This is what you're left with. Beautiful. So it's separated. This is all a kind of coagulated curd on the top and then you have just this watery milky mixture down here and then it's pretty thick down there so this little layer is exactly what you want to see so now we're going to separate all of the chunks and we just want that little milky liquid on the inside that is the lactic acid bacteria so pull this chunk out strain it off and then it's done we'll be needing this again and I'm gonna put this in the rice cooker. It smells cheesy. It smells like cottage cheese. It doesn't stink at all. So to separate this out, you could just cut this into pieces and pull it all up, but 
since I have a narrow mouth jar, I think if I just... Yep. Feel free to compost this. It's good for your compost. No need to waste it. There she goes. Should use a cheesecloth. I have this strainer. So I'm using a square container because it's easier to pour out of. Whatever container you've got works fine. And I don't have a cheesecloth, so I'm just gonna run it through the strainer with a paper towel just to get all the chunks. So while this strains, we can prep our containers that we're gonna transfer it into. I use glass, any kind of little easy to pour from container. This works really well. I love this one. This is my LAB from last time. See how long it's been? I haven't made it for months. I use this for a two and a half gallon watering can, so you don't need much. And it lasts a long time in the fridge. So while this one's straining, I'll show you how to use it. I use, I did the math. <laughs> this was the perfect amount for a 2.6 gallon watering can, which is what I use. I'll, I'll look it up. So one to two tablespoons per gallon of water. Two. Two. And a half. Okay. So this is how much I would use for my 2.6 gallon watering can. And since we're still waiting on this, I'll show you how to do it. So I got my LED here. I'll have enough to do the whole yard left over. It's nice to have a, a stockpile. You want to use non-chlorinated water. So I'm using my rain barrel, but get away from that loud sound. I'm using my rain barrel water, but if you don't have collected water, just take your tap water and put it in an open container and just let it sit probably overnight just to dechlorinate since lab is an active solution you don't want chlorine interfering with the microbes now is also a good time to add any other liquid soluble nutrients you might have like water soluble calcium and just do one feeding application for multiple nutrients some tips with LAB, you want to water first if you can, just to get the soil moist. If you do this when it's raining, that'd be even better, but you don't just want to throw this straight on hot, dry soil. You want to either do it in the morning or in the evening so it has time to work into the wet soil and better absorption rate for the plants. But it's, it's really hot right now. I might do it anyway just for the sake of demonstration because in this black watering can, it's gonna get way too hot if I leave this. So I'll water the shadier parts of my yard to demonstrate. So we're gonna pretend this is full. It's basically full. It rained last night, so this is a great time for me to treat everything. Got some lettuce in here, got a squash, a tomato. So I'm not trying to thoroughly water, I'm just applying this to the soil so it can work in and you're expecting results over time. So I'm inoculating the soil rather than feeding it directly. So don't hose everything down with it. You can use one can to water a few beds. It's, it's diluted, but that's kind of the point. This isn't the only fertilizer you'll need, but it, it's a really easy, helpful one to use. Peas, sage, squash. All right, so that's it for this can. Let's go check 
So this is mostly strained. For the sake of example, I'm gonna consider that done. So here's our finished LED. Let's transfer this into a clean glass container. And you know the drill. So I keep this in the fridge next to my Bokashi bucket, just so whenever it's getting topped off, I can put a splash in. And then this one, I'll just put it back in the fridge. I'll use it first. I'm not worried about it being from December of last year because it really has a decent shelf life. There's not much left. So I'll finish this one up first just to get the container out of the way. And that's it for LAB. Use it as a feeder as frequently as you'd like. I wouldn't exceed more than once a week, but make sure you're diluting it. Applying it when the ground is wet and the sun is not intense will give you the best results. Using LAB as a base and then later when you have more KNF solutions, you can start stacking them to create more multi-purpose fertilizers, but this one is just a good all-around soil health booster, and that's why I use it. It's really easy, it's super cheap, it lasts a long time, and so for that I would recommend anybody trying it. You're not going to have to worry about shocking your plants with this. It's, it's pretty neutral. I would equate it to like just a compost feeding. It's not harsh, it's not hot, it will not conflict with any other fertilizers you're currently using either. So just as a bonus, this is the way to go. Hope you like it. Hope you try it. Thanks for watching. See you later. I'm gonna transfer into our, can't stand there. It's too cranky.